Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey. A while ago, Valve published a video titled Steam Visibility, How Games Get Service to Players. This is an absolutely excellent video that provides a great insight into how Steam actually works as explained by Steam themselves, so straight from the source. It covers what parts are algorithmic and what parts are manually curated. So this is all some extremely excellent info. If you want to find success as an indie dev yourself, then knowing about Steam and how it works is absolutely essential. So you should definitely learn about it as much as possible. This is really the kind of video that every single developer should watch. It's kind of odd how it actually has so few views. The whole video is really great, so I highly encourage you to watch it after this one. However, the main part that I want to focus on this video is the part where they talk about the myths with the CM algorithm and how it actually works. So basically, what is a factor in getting visibility and what is not a factor. I think this part is really interesting because some of the things they actually say kind of go somewhat contrary to what myself and several C marketing experts have said. Although the slide does contain some huge asterisks, so let's go through it point by point to really see what is reality and what is myth, so what things affect your visibility and what things don't. Honestly, if you're looking for a super quick TLDR, then I'm pretty sure I can sum up the entire Steam algorithm in just one word, and that is simply money. That's really pretty much it. The goal of the entire algorithm is simply to get players to spend money. That's how Steam makes money, and it's how developers make money. Basically, the more money you make on Steam, the more Steam promotes you and helps you make more money. If the algorithm thinks that a game will sell, or more accurately, if they actually have some proof that the game will sell, or has already sold well, then they won't promote that game. However, on the other hand, if the algorithm does not think that a certain game will sell, or if simply there is no evidence that it might do well, or any significant interest in that game, if so, then Steam will simply not promote that game. Now that sounds way too obvious, but it really is that simple. Basically, the more money that you make for Steam, the more Steam will help you make more money. Although, of course, simple does not mean easy. Getting people to buy your games is extremely difficult. So here, let's go through this list one by one of each individual factor and see in detail just how much they actually affect and how much energy you should spend on trying to improve each one of these points. Starting off with store page traffic, so basically the number of people that visit your Steam page. And like he says... Does store page traffic affect visibility on Steam? The answer is no. So this does not affect your visibility on Steam. Although, like we will see with pretty much every single one of these factors, there's always a hazard risk involved. And this one is also no different from that. So technically, store page traffic does not influence your visibility. Meaning, if you get 10,000 people to buy your game and 1,000 of those buy it, and then for another game, if it gets a million people to that page and 1,000 buy it, if so, then in terms of the same algorithm, both of them won't receive the exact same visibility. Again, when in doubt, just ignore all the numbers except for money. But of course, the huge asterisk is simply if more people visit your store page, then chances are you are very likely to sell more copies than someone with fewer visits. Either sell more copies or simply get more wishlists. And those two signals, those do impact visibility quite a lot. So technically, store page traffic does not directly affect visibility on Steam. So for example, don't think you can set up some ad and buy some super cheap views, get millions of impressions, and somehow hope that that will trigger the Steam algorithm. That will not happen, that will not work. But just getting more traffic, genuine traffic, that will in turn lead to more sales and wishlists, which do indeed impact visibility. Then for a really important one, review score. So does it impact visibility or not? Let's hear what they say. Next is review score. Does review score have an effect on your visibility on Steam? Well, the answer is it's not a factor. And the answer in the video is that it's not a factor. With pretty much the only asterisk that he mentions being under 40% score, under that the game is mostly negative and that apparently has an impact in terms of Steam visibility. But as long as you are above that limit, then technically it's not a factor. And again, now let me expand upon this myself and add some more asterisks. Once again, we go back to the only thing that matters to the Steam algorithm, which is money. So as long as your game sells, then yes, that is correct that the review score does not matter. That is how, for example, you can see the FIFAs and the NBA 2K games. These games, almost every single year, they always have overwhelmingly negative reviews. And yet, they've got thousands, which means they've sold millions of copies. These are indeed heavily promoted on Steam by Steam themselves. And the reason for that is simply because there are tons of people who buy those games every single year, regardless of review, they just buy it automatically. So the Steam algorithm simply sees, okay, this game is selling well, so let's promote it a bunch more. However, I would highly caution you against this type of thinking. Basically, this strategy only works if you have a multi-million dollar marketing budget. If you do, then yep, you can pretty much brute force the algorithm to giving you more visibility because you can pretty much force a certain number of sales regardless of reviews. But if you're just a regular indie, then while technically review scores don't impact your visibility directly, since you don't have that massive marketing budget, you are much more dependent on general player feel and players are much less likely to buy a game with mixed review score than a positive one. So technically, yes, the review score is not a factor as long as you can keep convincing people to buy your game. But again, like I said, if you don't have a multi-million dollar budget, 
then having something under the positive review score, under that, that will actually impact your sales, which will indeed be a very important factor. Then with regards to review scores, there's always the issue with the first 10 reviews. If you don't even get 10 reviews, then you don't even get a score. So below that, your game is pretty much invisible to the Steam algorithm. You can browse the new releases page and see just how many games don't even have a score, meaning they have under 10 reviews, so you can see how many of them there are. Basically, for all of these games, these are completely invisible to the Steam algorithm. That is why my advice to you is ask your players to leave reviews for your games. You need to desperately get above that 10 review score just to get a base bare minimum amount of visibility from Steam. Now, something that myself and various other Steam marketing experts have mentioned are the various review buckets. So like I said, you've got the one below 10 reviews, then you've got from 10 to 50, 50 to 500, and above 500. Now, these buckets do exist. You can see the difference based on the actual titles behind the reviews. For example, if you've got under 50 reviews, you cannot see very positive, and if you have under 500, you cannot see overwhelmingly positive. So those buckets do exist, but when it comes to visibility, that part is a bit more questionable. For some games, they seem to get a nice boost when they go past 50, and for others, it doesn't really change as long as they go past the 10. So these two are a bit more questionable, but still my advice is try to get 50 reviews as much as possible just in case it has some sort of impact. Hitting 500 is extremely difficult, but hitting 50 reviews, hopefully that should be doable. So speaking of reviews, let me just say thank you to everyone who picked up my game and wrote the review. I did thankfully manage to get quickly past the 10 mark, and thanks to all of you, I did manage to get past the 50 mark, so thank you all so much. Okay, so the next point, and this is the big one, wishlist. So how much do they impact your visibility? And you might be a bit surprised to hear their official answer. Next is wish list. Do they have an impact on your visibility on Steam? The answer is not a factor, with a big asterisk. So technically not a factor, but like it says, the big asterisk is they are a factor before release. And that is exactly what myself and Steam marketing experts say. Wish lists are extremely important before release. They are an excellent predictor of sales. But after the game is out, then yeah, at that point, wish lists don't really matter. Then he mentions how apparently it's a myth where you need certain number of wish lists to be invited to join a daily deal or some special featuring. And again, this is another one where it's true, but once again, comes with an asterisk. Simply speaking, games that have more sales, they get more visibility and more visibility leads to more wish lists. So technically, no, wish list numbers do not impact your odds of being invited towards a daily deal. The number that I've heard, and I don't know if it's 100% accurate, is that you need at least 200,000 in revenue. So once again, that's the number that matters, the actual money. If you sell over $200,000 in revenue, at that point, you might be invited, you might be receiving an email from Steam themselves asking you if you'd like to be on a daily deal. But in general, yep, just amount of wish lists after the game is out, that does not matter. Also, like he says, wish lists are extremely important because people will get notifications. So it happens when the game launches and when you discount your game more than 20%. When that happens, the people who have wish list your game, they will get an email notification. So again, technically not a direct factor, wish lists by themselves will not impact your visibility. But of course, the more wish lists you have, even after release, the more people will get that email, which might turn into more sales, which again impacts the visibility. So if you just look at this slide and you see not a factor, you might be confused as to why pretty much every developer asks you to weather game to your wish list. And the answer is simply because while technically there is no direct impact, there is very much an indirect impact. More wish lists means more people getting notified when your game is out, which in turn hopefully leads to more sales on release, which leads to more visibility, leads to more reviews, more sales, more visibility, and so on. So on this, my advice is really the same thing that I've always said. Try to gather as many wish lists as you can before release so that hopefully you can have a successful launch, which hopefully starts the ball rolling so you can get more and more visibility and sell more and more copies. You need to at least have a strong enough launch so that you separate yourself from those hundreds or really thousands of games that have zero reviews. Next up, we have early access. And for this one, it is not a factor. The one big asterisk is how early access games don't appear on the new and trending list regardless of how well it sells. So it is not a factor, but again, remember the only thing that matters to Steam is actual sales. And there is a very large portion of players on Steam who simply do not buy early access games no matter what. So if you launch into early access, then chances are you won't sell less than a full release, which in turn will affect your visibility. Although when it comes to this, when it comes to early access, honestly, your choice should be entirely based on the game and not based on visibility at all. If your game is unfinished and you have a nice roadmap to completion, then perhaps consider early access. But if your game is done and you don't have a dedicated roadmap, then don't go into early access hoping for something special. Some people think that early access technically means that you have two launches, the early access launch and the 1.0 launch, and that is somewhat true, but really only true for very successful early access games. If your game finds massive success in early access, then chances are that will translate into extra sales for the full launch, which again will positively impact your visibility. But if not, if your early access launch does not sell a ton, then you are pretty much guaranteed to not get any extra visibility when the game launches the full release. 
Next up we have localization. And yep, this is the one that they do point out how it's very clearly a factor. And yep, it does make sense. Especially when you go into the theme stats and you scroll down here and you go under language and you can see how English is just 30% of the actual languages on Steam. So whilst that is obviously a huge amount, 30% of something like 200 million players, that's a huge amount, but still that is only 30%, meaning there are two thirds of the audience on Steam that do not speak English. So if your game is only in English, then it will never show up to all those people who only play games in their own language. So for this point, my advice is definitely super simple. Definitely make sure to include localization in your game. I can definitely recommend the Unity localization package. It's what I use to localize my game and it works pretty great. It's super simple to use and supports pretty much any language you want. As for getting translators, there are tons of places to find them. For me, I got translators for my game. I found them on Fiverr. Just sent them the English text for the store page and all the text that I use in the game, they convert it. And then of course, the big question is which languages do you translate to? Now for that, I would say the answer really starts by looking over here on the Steam stats. So I would say you absolutely need to support, of course, English and simplified Chinese. After that, it kind of depends on the audience, kind of depends on what game you're making. For example, if you've got a tycoon or a simulation game, then usually German, the German audience really likes those types of games. Polish also seems to do well in those types of games. Then if your game is anime, then of course include Japanese. So basically pick the ones that make the most sense for a game and then just go through the list and pick which ones are the most popular. So in my case, for my game, here are the ones that I picked. Basically, I just included English and Chinese by default. Then I also picked German and Polish because those tend to like management automation games. And then I just picked some more popular ones. I picked French, Japanese, Portuguese, since I can kind of do it myself. And I had also picked Spanish, but I had some issues with the translator for that. So that one is still upcoming. But yep, like he says, localization is definitely a factor for getting more visibility on Steam. So definitely make sure you do it. If you use the localization package, then it's super simple to add. So there's no reason not to do it. Although, like he says, you can always do it later. So if you're way too busy at launch, then maybe add it afterwards in some kind of big update. Somewhat related to that is also controller support. Again, same thing, if you don't have controller support, then your game will not be promoted to any players who pretty much just play games with a controller. And nowadays with the Steam Deck, the controller becomes even more important. There are tons of people playing games on deck and those people will definitely like your game and they will only play it if it has controller support. And once again, this is another thing that is super easy to implement as long as you're using the input system. If you don't know about it, go ahead and watch my tutorial on it. It's pretty simple to use and make it super easy to support any gamepad, Steam Deck, anything you want. Now, of course, that is also dependent on what kind of game you're making. If you're making a game where you control a character, kind of like my own game, then it's super simple and makes perfect sense to add that. But if you're making some kind of complex RTS, then maybe controller support might be quite tricky. But if you can do it, then definitely go ahead and do it. And in the end, he mentions pretty much exactly what I said in my TLDR. Basically, Steam can help you snowball to success, but it's up to you to get the ball rolling meaning that it's all up to you to give it that initial push. If you just launch a game on Steam with no marketing, nothing, then nothing will happen, no one will know the game exists, and no one will buy any copies. Nowadays, launching a game soundly on Steam, that does not yield any results. Another great tip he mentions is creating big events around the launch, major updates, or a healthy discount. The algorithm does react to sales velocity, meaning if you sell a thousand copies in just one hour, that is much more important to the algorithm, as opposed to if you sell a thousand copies over the course of an entire month, so definitely keep that in mind if you're planning a big update or a big event on your game. If you have a big boost in sales in a short period of time, that will help the algorithm give you more visibility, which gives you more sales. So in general, technically all of these things are supposedly not a factor, but in reality they are actual factors. The asterisks over here are actually pretty big. Basically when in doubt, just think the only thing that matters to seem is money. The only thing that drives the algorithm is money. So technically all of these are not factors because they directly do not lead to actual sales but they indirectly do lead to sales, so in that case, these are pretty much always going to be some kind of factor. In terms of store page traffic, I would say don't worry about that. You might think to experiment with some paid advertising, but I would say definitely limit those experiments. From everything that I've seen, that rarely works unless you have an expensive indie game, something above $30. In terms of review scores, my advice is to get those 10 reviews as quickly as possible. And hopefully, of course, your game is good so that that score stays above 70%, which stays it positive. And then try to get 50 reviews, although again, whether that has an impact or not, that is still debatable. Then in terms of wishlists, they are a great predictor of sales, and that matters quite a bit for the algorithm. So do make sure you get as many wishlists as possible before release. If your goal is financial success, then before release, you should probably have at the very least 5,000, hopefully more than 10,000. But then after release, at that point, don't worry about wishlists anymore. You can pretty much just completely ignore that number after release. In terms of early access, this is a question related to the development of your game. It is not a visibility question. So don't decide on doing or not doing early access simply based on visibility. In terms of localization, do make sure to add at least English and simplified Chinese. 
After that, add as many languages as you can and as many as make sense for your particular genre. Like I said, with today's tool, with the Unity's localization package, it's pretty simple to implement, so there's really no reason not to do it. Also related to that is simply gamepad support. Once again, with the input system, that is super easy to add, so if that works for your game, for your genre, definitely make sure to do it. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this whole video is absolutely excellent, so I highly encourage you to go watch it. I hope that both that video and this one, I hope they both help you get a better understanding of how the CM algorithm works, which in turn I really hope helps increase your odds of success.